Okay, guys, you already know what it is, right? Banless season is out, you know, the banless is finally out, and I can't really explain what's going on here other than this format was already mostly fine. It was 90% fine, and there was maybe two or three really big problem cards that should have gotten hit. None of them really got hit, but I guess it's a good thing that like the format's mostly healthy, like other than Shifter and an epidemic virus. And now that Arise Heart's banned, we don't even know if Cash players are gonna keep playing, you know, Cash Tira, because most people were getting tired of Cash Tira anyway. And a lot of people were saying, like literally it was, people stopped playing Cash Tira not because the deck became worse, but because the deck was just not fun to play. You know, it was just not a fun format to play in. Banning Arise Heart means that people actually have a reason to stop playing Cash Tira and it not just being the lack of enjoyment from the deck's existence. Without a Rise Heart, the deck just becomes a plain, like I can't imagine playing Kashir without playing something like uh, Floodgates now, because w w what rank sevens are you making other than Shangri-Ra and I don't know, Big Eye or something, like <laughs> you're gonna have to get really creative with Kash and by hitting a Rise Heart and not limiting Fenrir or anything, literally only five cards got moved on this list. This is so small compared to the last one that we got in uh, June, so this is kind of interesting to witness like the differences and like how they created the last balance compared to this one. Like, look at this, Magnema and Chaos Space, like they are making minute hits slap on their wrists to Dragon Link. And I think hitting Chaos Space does ruin its consistency a bit. They want you to keep playing Bistials because of Unchained. They don't want Unchained to go completely unchecked. But at the same time, it's like, well, you know, we also don't want Dragon Link to be too strong. So I think that's why they kept Shifter around, because Unchained would have less answers to it, right? Because Unchained can't really do much if you Shifter them. Like, they, they have to really lower their, their ceiling compared to let's say something like Rescue Ace, where Rescue Ace can, can still, they can still get the set four. They might not be able to go into any like extra deck combos, but the set four is still gonna happen in Rescue Ace compared to Unchained, you know? Um, so literally the, the, the limited page is only for Dragon Link and um, oh, the unlimited page is Gazelle and Orange Light. I don't know why Gazelle doesn't have, like I almost thought this was, this was like a ritual monster when I first saw this. Um, Orange Light coming back up to three, uh, I mean, Fairy decks, Agents, I, I heard Agents are, like, I, I faced my friend's Agents, like, a few weeks ago, and I'm like, oh, wow, like, this deck actually has some sauce to it, you know, if it can pop off and stuff. Um, Ritual decks, uh, I'm not too sure what this does for the TCG, I know Kurikara is a fairy, um, statues still exist here in TCG, so... Tier Limit might be able to take advantage of this. I, I'm, I'm not too sure what we're gonna be doing with Orange Light, but Gazelle back to three means we are so back. Like, um, Cyber decks and Gazelle, I, I mean, and Salamangri decks can play um, the Salad Engine at full power. And with the new support out of Soul Burning Volcano, uh, the recent top uh, from that one event, I, I don't know which one it is, but there, there was a Salamangri top recently and it was just pure Salamangri right um and so because of that uh let me see here there we go so uh yeah this saw him angry to fire it actually this thing actually got bought out um yeah it, if we just view sales history real quick um this thing was like 18 bucks like a few hours ago <laughs> And now, yeah, like literally, it was like 17, 18 bucks. Now it's like shooting up to like 20. I guess this is like the new heart of the deck. Uh, Saw Mangry of Fire. Because um, it searches, it locks you into fire. Yeah, I could see this. I could see why this is pretty good. Anything, like any searcher, like this could re replace Lady Debug in the deck. Like, and it's a like in engine Lady Debug that's more searchable. Like, you don't have to go. Like the salad engine is a lot more tight in it now with all this new support. Um, with like Burst Griffin, Sunlight Wolf, Ghost Rare. This, this, this shit was just literally, 
um, I just saw a listing for like 49 bucks and now that's gone. It's it's like 60 bucks. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, actually, no, it's not 60. It's it's still it's still around 55, 56. It's still yeah. Um, I actually have a copy of this. <laughs> you guys haven't seen me do IRL deck profiles in a long time, but I've been amassing a collection and yeah. Um, you know, it was real funny. I was just looking at this because booster boxes of this set, like they're they're moving them for like 30 bucks each, right? Dude, someone just bought 10, 10 booster boxes of this shit for 200 bucks. They are gonna go so plus if they pull any of the Salamangreat shit. Like literally, that is such a good deal, right? Not, yeah, everyone's buying these like $20 booster boxes of a uh, Soul Burning Volcano. Because like, why not? You know, it's like if they're 20 bucks and you have like, a whole like a thousand of them sitting around you know like you want to play saw mangrate this is the set to buy and it, it it even helps that the 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 um battling boxer stuff may go up in the future depending on how well infernoble knight does um in the upcoming format with like the snake eye shit so yeah this is a really good set to invest in at the moment once age of overlord comes out th this is going to be it and that's not even that's not even looking at the main event here, the tins. My man, Cashier Fenrir, oh my god, this thing just shot up. It, it just doubled in price. Look at this. Look at this thing. When the, <laughs> like, this thing was like literally eight bucks at the start of the day. And now we have hundreds of sales coming in to where now it is landing at like $22, $25 per copy. And now people are listing, look at Gamer's Choice. They, they just listed 200 copies of Fenrir for $22, $23 each. Holy shit. Wow. Fenrir is just going crazy. I'm glad I already pre-ordered mine from the tins. Like, oh man. Dude, we were all so adamant that the tins were not a good set when they came out. And to be fair, they weren't because the risk of the ban list was too high now by keeping Fenrir around first off is first off Fenrir keeps rogue decks playing the game this format so that's why Fenrir is actually kind of a cool card to keep around I don't mind it staying at three because that means that more decks get to play Vanquish Soul gets to play um more you know fringe strategies get to have answers for things that they wouldn't normally have answers for allowing them to exist more in the format you know so it, it's also a really good bait for for any kind of interruptions before you actually start your combo so again Fenrir is just an amazing card and everyone thought that it was going to get hit because we all thought well cash needed to get hit well TCG was like, we we see how much you guys love Fenrir, so instead of hitting Fenrir, we're gonna kill a Riseheart to kill the main, to, to kill the Kashira strategy, right? As like a whole, but we're gonna keep the main deck monsters around so that you guys can still mess around with them because people are still messing around with like Unicorn, Burf, Fenrir packages. And now that Fenrir is staying around at three, it's like, now I can, use this in your Sark deck, you know, tribute, tribute it from hand, um, or tribute the one that you search from hand, you know, uh, use this in whatever, you know, super heavy samurai with like revolution synchron. It, like, I feel like really cool deck. I'd, I'd love to play a card like Fenrir in it. So yeah, man, Fenrir just shot up to like 25 bucks. That's or 23 bucks, excuse me. Uh, Gamer's Choice is solidifying the price of that card on the market. They waited until this ban list to see what was gonna happen with Fenrir. And it's like, it's kind of hilarious because a lot of vendors were sitting on all this stock and now they get to profit off of it, of, of the Megatons, because no one wanted it. No one wanted a lot of this stuff from the Megatons. Um, let's go back here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What else from the tins? Uh, I'm a little surprised Lubellion isn't like getting the same amount of love as uh, Fenrir is, but I guess it's because it doesn't work for as many decks. Like there is still a lot of people buying Lubellion. Don't don't get me wrong. It's just it's not enough to influence the market, right? Like there's still a lot of listings. There's still 80 listings of this thing 
for 10 bucks. So people are solidifying the price of this card. Um, Branded's still around. Some people thought Branded Fusion was gonna get hit. That's perfectly fine. Garua, uh, I, I don't think anything else down here has really shifted too much from the tins. Like, I don't think any, like maybe some of the other best deals are going up, but Magnemut's probably gonna go down because it's limited. Um, but yeah, I mean, shit. Labyrinth didn't get hit, so maybe some of the lab stuff might go up if you picked up a core for it. But otherwise, I think, like, it's a really good thing that this ban list came out. Despite how small and simple it is, it's a good thing that this ban list came out. And I'll tell you why. Because everyone was so worried that their stuff is going to get hit that all the prices of everything started to drop. And so it became this sort of like, do we invest, do we not invest, sort of like a risk reward thing where it's like, well, if it does, if we invest in fan mirrors and it gets hit, then, you know, not too shabby. But if we don't invest in fan mirror and it gets hit, then we're good. But if we don't invest in fan mirror and it doesn't get hit, then we're kind of screwed. But honestly, 20 bucks for a fan mirror is not that bad. Like 20 bucks for a Fenrir is not that bad. Like that, that shit used to be 40, 50 dollars a copy. Um, and for like a good week, Fenrir was fucking affordable. But that's not the case anymore. Uh, if you want a place at a Fenrir, it's gonna cost it's gonna cost you the same amount as food for the week. Um, the ultis aren't going as quickly as the other rarities are. Like the, these guys are. It's, it's, it's a few sales. It's a few sales. Oh, well, actually, never mind. Uh, they The ultis literally doubled in price. Um, ne never mind what I just said. The ultis, like, doubled in price in the past, uh, past hour. Now the, the ultra rare. Wait, is this one actually affordable? This one's more affordable than the, the one from the tins. Look at that. So now you get to play ultra rare fan mirrors if, you, if you've been holding these. Um then, I mean, it's a, it's a lot cheaper than it used to be, but it's better to hold them. Oh my god, there's only four listings left. Okay, never mind. That, that was TCG failing to... I was about to be like, no way someone just bought all those copies from GC. No shot. Um, but yeah. Fenrir's doing well. Um, glad to see the card still exists, you know? Uh, honestly, like... It's, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. There's a lot of things in modern Yu-Gi-Oh that feel like a double-edged sword, but like no epidemic virus ban and no um, goddamn shifter ban is like the kind of a double-edged sword because now it's like everyone can use, well, not everyone can use shifter and epidemic virus, but everyone can use Fenrir and it's still at three. So <sighs> I don't know. I'm, I'm just bantering on at this point. That, that's that's all I have to say about this list. Um, pick up Salad if you like Cybers, and pick up Fenrir's if you, you know, want to keep playing the game. <laughs> um, other than other than that, I mean, if you're gonna play the uh, new Jack Atlas structure deck, right? The then you know, cool. You know, Calamity sticking around. And that's probably going to stay around until Centurion comes out, then they might hit Calamity. But for, for the time being, Calamity is going to stick around. Um, and yeah. Well, welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! 2023. Um, or 2024 at this point, because I don't think we're getting... I don't think the ban list we're getting in like December is going to do much either, honestly. It might hit some decks, depending on how much Age of Overlord impacts the format but ultimately get get used to this format we're gonna be in it for pr pr pretty much until the end of the year so if, if you've enjoyed the format up to this point you're gonna be really happy with with this list because it doesn't change much other than a few problematic cards which I think you should be you should be be playing the deck that has answers for those cards anyway like um, you know like, if you should be playing decks to have answers for Shifter, and EEV, you can't really have answers for that, but, you know, 
still. Um, man. I'm just so, like, man. <laughs> How are you that small? Um, brand is not affected. Oh, yeah, let, let, let me look at the branded fusion price before I go. Um, because I have some ulties. <laughs> uh, these, these, these were dropping. Are, are people buying them, though? People are buying them. Look at that. People are, people are, uh, back into branded Chimera. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I don't think these are going to go up because there's too many listings of them. I mean, there's only 34 listings left, but there, there, there was too many listings to really affect the price of it, but it's going to, it's, it's been solidified, you know, as like a $48 card. Yeah. Okay. What about Ulti Aldaz? Yeah, these, these bad boys are staying at 29s, 30s. Nice, okay. Um, <laughs> so if you guys ever see my branded Gay Guardian deck profile, now I can get cooking. This, this is the good part, because now I can get cooking with a whole bunch of new decks, and <laughs> I'm, I'm putting this in the fucking thumbnail. Um, I can get cooking with a bunch of new decks, I can, um, you know, now that the now that like the banlist anxiety is like out of the picture, this is the best time for you know um, for us to start getting back into the flow of content and um, figuring out where we want to go from here. So, hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you guys think uh, below. This has been Nistro signing out.